Hey everyone, Lee, we're here with the latest edition of the Coppers 412. Four things I want you to know, one thing to think about, and two things to look forward to. Now starting off with the four things I'd like you to know. First, in case you missed it, Coppers 2021 Corporate Sustainability Report was released on June 29th and is now available on the homepage of our website. The report provides lots of detailed information and data about the progress we've made this past year to help position our company for long-term success in the areas of people, planet, and performance. The report serves as a tool to bring transparency to key metrics that in turn contributes to holding ourselves accountable to the progress being made on our long-term goals as we strive to be better in every way that we can. Putting the report together is no small feat and is approximately eight months of work among a cross-functional team of employees. So hats off to the team who made it come to life, including Leslie Hyde, Joe Dowd, Jessica Franklin, John Irvine, Paul McEwen, Quinn McGuire, Julia Millman, Courtney Welsh, and Fran Wisniewski along with all the subject matter experts who contributed content along the way. I encourage you to visit the website at coppers.com, take a look, and let us know if you have ideas for the future. The second thing I want you to know is at the end of June, I, along with a number of other senior leaders and members of the RPS and Zero Harm teams, had the chance to visit employees at our Muncie, Pennsylvania cross-tie treating facility to officially congratulate them in person for their 2021 Zero Harm President's Award win. And while there, we had the opportunity to have dinner with plant manager Al Rutz and his management team, meet with the safety committee, take a tour of the plant, and enjoy spending time with the entire team over a great lunch. Now, the Muncie facility is unique in that it's our largest supplier of cross ties for commercial railroads, while the majority of our other RPS facilities primarily serve Class 1 customers. Now, serving both Class 1 customers and a variety of commercial railroads with differing specifications makes the work the team does even more complex and impressive. In 2021, they collectively produced and shipped more than 900,000 cross ties while besting all 45 Coppers facilities around the world with their collective safety performance, particularly in the rate of leading indicators, which include safety observations, hazard identifications, and recording of near misses. Kudos again to the entire Susquehanna team, and thanks to everyone who helped make the event a success, especially Jennifer Simpson and Olivia Test. The third thing I want you to know about is the new credit facility that we recently closed on last month. We had a few years left on our existing facility, but given the wild shifts in many parts of the global economy thus far this year, we felt it was prudent to take the opportunity to push the term out a few more years into 2027, while also increasing the size of it to $800 million. Now, in addition to increasing our liquidity, the real interesting thing about this facility is our ability to amend it in consultation with the co-sustainability agents on the facility, PNC Capital Markets and B of A Securities, to include certain agreed upon sustainability key performance indicators or external environmental, social, and governance ratings targets that if achieved, could lower our overall cost of borrowing. So bottom line is that we're further incentivized to continue to protect what matters and preserve the future to ensure that Coppers lives on to serve our various stakeholders for generations to come. Thanks to all the banks that participated to help get this done, especially PNC Bank and Wells Fargo, who serve as administrative agents for various parts of the agreement. And my hat goes off to the Coppers team with Jimmy Sue Smith, Stephanie Apostolou, Brad Pierce, Tracy McCormick, Jim Hogan, Josh Haft, and Angela Bland, who brought this over the finish line. It's a ton of work that goes on behind the scenes to do a deal like this, and most people take it for granted, but we can't operate it without capital. Thanks again to all involved. The fourth and final thing I want you to know about this month is about a special Coppers employee who recently retired after, get this, 60 years with the company. Mr. James Burnett, also known affectionately as Granddaddy, started at Copper's Floor in South Carolina plant back in 1962. 1962, imagine that, that's crazy. In his 60 years with Copper's, James held a variety of different roles, starting out as a yard laborer and retiring as a lift truck operator. Now, James never shied away from hard work, and now that he's retiring, he plans to take some of that energy and devote it to doing work around his house and farm while wondering what his work family is doing at the Florence plant. One thing I'll guarantee you, James, is that whatever they're doing at Florence, you'll be missing a little bit of your spirit. So you stay well and thank you for your incredible 60 years of service to Coppers. Now for the one thing to think about. So I'll start by relaying a little story from a few days back. Jessica Franklin, our manager of corporate communications and giving, received a note out of the blue from one of our longtime employees, a Mr. Bill Randolph, one of our cross-tie buyers based in Southern Missouri. Now Bill's note was passionate and to the point. He and his wife Carla do a lot of work in their local community doing improvements to their local schools to the point of being recognized by their local chamber of commerce for their volunteerism. Now Bill's ask was simple. There's a 30-foot bridge in his town that leads to the school football and soccer fields and while it's structurally sound, in Bill's words, it looks terrible as the paint has long since faded. 
Now, Bill wanted to know if coppers could possibly help by pitching in for the paint and supplies while he volunteered the labor to get it painted. As he said, funding for their school is limited and so it's difficult to get much done at their facilities, which I know is quite a common problem at a lot of school districts across the country. Well, Jessica informed Bill that coppers would be happy to help and he's ecstatic. Now, a big part of our company values of people, planet, and performance revolves around understanding our role in many cases as a key contributor to the health and vitality of the communities where we operate. So now for the one thing to think about for all of our Coppers employees is, can I be doing more to have a positive impact in my local community? Now, I know we have so many Coppers team members like Bill who are actively involved in making their communities safer, stronger, cleaner. And I also bet we have a number of team members who for various reasons have chosen not to get involved. And I'm sure for some it may have just never occurred to them the simple impact they might have or they might question what can one person do? Well the answer is a lot. And when everyone gets involved, it becomes a force multiplier for good. So what can you do to make an impact? Please share your stories with Jessica Franklin or Joel Millman, and we can make sure to highlight your efforts and bring even more of a spotlight to the selfless work that our people are involved in every single day. Okay, now two things to look forward to. First, at the end of August, we'll be convening employees from the railroad products and services business along with some of our IT and engineering folks for an idea summit led by global innovation manager, Ashley Coop to brainstorm ways to better support the railroads. A core team put in a lot of work helping conduct industry research to determine which specific topics to focus on, with special thanks going out to Brian Stout, Phil McDonald, Joe Elliott, and John Herbeck. Over the course of three days, the group will hear from industry experts, including representatives from Norfolk Southern and BNSF. Then they'll work to brainstorm and prioritize ways to better utilize technology, offer more sustainable solutions, and hopefully lead to some new business opportunities helping one of our key customer bases and critical pieces of the North American infrastructure. I'm looking forward to meeting the group while they're in town and hearing what great ideas come out of the session. Finally, the second of the two things to look forward to for this month is the release of our second quarter earnings coming up on Thursday, August 4th and our regional all-employee meetings that will follow soon afterwards. Yes, it's that time again and we look forward to sharing insights into how the crazy gyrations that are happening in our global economy every day bring about both challenges and opportunities and what our plans are to capitalize on them. So as I sign off with this month's 412, I'd like to sneak in one more thing I want everyone to know, which is that the latest edition of the Link Parents newsletter went out in June, and the group wants you to share your family photos from your summer adventures. Each week we'll have a different theme, with this week being Hike and Bike Week. Send your family's photos in a brief description to linkp at coppers.com. That's linkp, L-I-N-K-P, at coppers.com. They'll compile a collage to share with our Coppers team. That's it for this month's edition of the 412. Hope everyone on this side of the equator is enjoying your summer. For those on the other side, it's coming soon enough. Stay safe and stay strong, everyone.